Hey, my name is Johnny McNeil and welcome to the Worship Central Vocal Tutorials. So in this session we want to talk to you a little bit about being a backing vocalist in a church worship team. Um, your role is really important, whether you're singing in a choir, maybe you, you might be in a group of four or five backing vocalists, maybe it's just you as the only backing vocalist in the team. However, whatever you're doing, you need to be able to bring a certain skill set to the table so you can serve uh, the team and serve the congregation that you're singing for as best you can. The main things you need to be thinking about is actually your role as a worshipper on stage. Uh, singing for a lot of people is not the easiest thing. So the congregation, they come into church and they might feel reasonably self-conscious about singing uh, to God, even though it's such an amazing experience. Uh, we love to encourage people to, to join in with that worship experience. And so for you, being on stage, uh, you're demonstrating worship. You're uh, in a prime position where you could actually help people become more comfortable with actually singing to God. This might be that you actually just put aside your self-consciousness and you're able just to, to give everything you've got. You're able to really focus on the lyrics and the words that you're singing and you're able to give your heart wholly to God in that moment. A lot of the time I find when I'm on stage, I have to work really hard to forget about the fact that I'm on stage and that I'm just there to serve as a worshipper. That might be a little something that's a bit uh, tricky for you, whether you're self-conscious about the, the way you look or maybe you feel just a little bit exposed and conspicuous Ambiguous. That's fine, but however, we need to keep our focus on the fact that we're worshipping God. That can happen in many different ways, whether it just be you um, feeling really comfortable and to put up your hands or, or maybe just to smile at some people and just make eye contact to communicate that we're in this together, we're worshipping worshiping together, this is a community thing. Uh, and it might be that you're, uh, that you're just able to, to, to sing out and give people lines that they can sing, uh, whether you're a female or a male there's going to be people that are going to listen to your voice, identify with your voice and actually that's going to assist them in singing along. Another part of your role as a backing vocalist is to enhance the overall sound of the group. Uh, so this might be contributing something like a harmony or a, a counterline or maybe it's just you expressing your free worship to, to encourage the congregation to join in with their own expression. But however, harmonies are crucial to be able, being able to support the team leader really, really well. Sometimes if you're singing the same line, singing in unison, it just can get a bit clashy. You're singing that same line at the same time as the team leader and you might have some slight tuning discrepancies and it really starts to stick out. And so what I'd really love to encourage you guys to do is to think about some harmonies that you could incorporate into the tunes that you sing at church. So like I always encourage vocalists to do that are backing, look for great harmonies. Now this might be going to the CD and actually learning them from the CD. There's a great um, wealth of harmonies that are on the CDs that we listen to, the worship resources that we've got um, and, and actually engaging with those might be a great place to start. But you can also just do it with your ears. That might seem a little bit simplistic but hey it really works. As singers we use, that, we use our ears a lot to try and engage with where the harmony is moving. Let's take a tune that I'm sure a lot of you sing. Uh, everlasting God. Uh, as you know, the melody goes like this. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. Okay, that's a really interesting couple of lines because even though I sung that line twice, underneath those lines, the chords are actually changing. So we need to be able to adapt or even know when we need to stay the same when we're singing our harmonies. And so if I was to take that line, you are the everlasting God, and I might want to put a tenor line. Tenor just means a high male part. I might want to put a tenor line on top of that melody. I might sing this. You are the everlasting God. Now you might notice that when I went up for that top note there, I just kept the same note all the way through rather than changing that note too much. I could have gone, you are the everlasting God, make it a bit more noty, but from singing it with our team, I found that I actually quite like how the, the same note there interacts with the chords really beautifully. So, you are the everlasting God. 
and just to remind you of that original melody, you are the everlasting God. Those two parts there work really, really beautifully. And it's great if you're on, the only backing vocalist in your team, just to find an, a harmony that's going to enhance that, that major melody there um, is going to actually give so much to the overall team sound. So here's a harmony part for all you girls out there. Now it's important that you address your range when you're, when you're trying to find a line that's going to complement your, uh, your team leader. So you're going to need to treat it differently for a female worship leader as opposed to a male leader. Uh, so for instance, if you have a male worship leader and you've got a high soprano voice, it's important that you don't find something really, really high to, to, to sing a harmony with. Try to find something that's going to be close enough to the male vocal that's going to complement nicely. And so it is with the, with, the, uh, with the female worship leader parts. Find things that are going to be nice and close and so you can actually create a beautiful uh, sonorous sound with those two harmonies working together. Okay, so firstly, if I have my melody there, you are the everlasting God. That's our main melody there. We want to put a tenor on top of that um, so you can have a bit of an idea of where to put your alto. So my tenor would go like this. You are the everlasting God. So that's our tenor line there. So if I'm going to add an alto on top of that, I want to make sure that's reasonably close to, to that tenor line. I don't want to go too high because I'm going to create a bit of a gap. You want to have everything nice and close together. Okay, so you've got to excuse me because I'm a guy singing in this female line here, but I'm going to go for it. Here we go. So, you are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. Okay, so as you can hear, I made a little change to that second one. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. To change with those chords underneath the, the, the melody line there. And when you sing that way, you're going to get a really nice group of vocals, really sounding great with the, with the chords that are being played. And also, you're going to create a lovely, lovely son sonorous sound to enhance the melody line and really make the overall sound of the worship experience amazing.